It's no secret that laser cutters and engravers are the hottest new craft hobby machines. You've probably seen the ads on social media showing the amazing things we are making using laser light to cut and engrave things like wood, acrylic, glass, and even metal. What's really cool about these devices is you can create things with dimensionality. Think signs with multiple levels and lights behind them. Tumblers with permanently etched personalization that won't crack or peel off. Infinitely small card stock with precision you just can't get with a blade. Personalized bracelets and rings, it's really endless. That's right. Our friends at We Create Next will have sent us two enclosed laser cutting and engraving machines to review, and we'll demonstrate some of the things these amazing machines can do. The X-Tool M1 is a groundbreaking class four slash class one laser cutting and engraving device that combines a 10 watt blue diode laser with a special built-in rotary blade if you're into cutting vinyl and fabrics and don't want to lose those capabilities, the X-Tool M1 is an awesome choice. We Create makes a class one laser cutter and engraver called We Create Vision. This doubles the diode laser to 20 watts, which enables you to cut and engrave a little faster. There is no blade in the We Create Vision, so it will not cut vinyl, but We Create's Vision does include an automatic riser platform and some other accessories that cost extra with other laser engraving tools. These laser beams are tiny. The accuracy is incredible. You can cut paper and thin cardstock to an amazing level of detail that most blade cutters, like the Cricut Maker, can't even come close to. Blades tend to rip tiny cuts, while lasers cut them perfectly. Let's see what We Create's vision could do with these tiny butterfly wings. Right? Both the X-Tool M1 and We Creates Vision use diode lasers. Diode lasers can cut and engrave wood and some other materials. Diode lasers have a longer lifespan and are much more affordable than other types of lasers. It's important to know that diode lasers cannot cut or engrave transparent things like acrylic. However, with a little finagling, they can engrave glass. Diode lasers max out at about 40 watts but there is some new tech in the pipeline that can combine multiple diode lasers for a little more power. There are other kinds of diode lasers, even one with an invisible beam called an infrared laser. IR lasers can engrave, but not cut, just about any kind of metal, among other things. IR lasers are great for personalizing things like jewelry, tools, pocket knives, or even silverware. Weird, right? The next step up from diode lasers is CO2 lasers, using a stream of carbon dioxide gas stored in replaceable cylinders, CO2 lasers are more powerful and can easily cut and engrave a broader range of materials, including thicker wood, clear acrylic, brick, ceramics, and even bone. CO2 lasers are more expensive to buy and maintain than diode lasers. Next up are fiber lasers. These are used exclusively to cut and engrave metal. Fiber lasers cannot cut wood. Now, laser light burns through the surface of whatever you're cutting or engraving. Engraving just burns into the wood, but not all the way through. Now, when you burn things, it creates smoke and fumes, some of which can be toxic and dangerous to breathe. With any laser cutter and engraver, you're going to need ventilation. If putting an exhaust hose outdoors or in a window isn't an option in the area where you plan to use your laser cutter, there are indoor filtration systems that can pull the smoke and fumes out of the machines and catch it in special filters. And yes, when you burn things, there's always the risk of fire that's burning. Fortunately, laser fires are rare and usually caused by people leaving scraps in their machines. We keep our machines pretty clean. And we do keep a small little fire extinguisher can nearby just in case. I can honestly admit that over the past six months of doing this, we've never created a fire with any of our laser engraving machines. Now there is a learning curve with these laser machines. Since each material is different, and what you want to achieve with these cuts and engravings will change over time as you develop your skills, you'll need to figure out two critical values for each material you use, power and time. Power is the amount of laser power you want to use, which can be set from 1% through full power at 100%. The time setting is how slow or fast you want your laser engraver to move. The slower the movement, the more the laser will burn in the same spot. It makes a darker burn. 
You'll need to experiment with different materials and determine the look that you want to achieve on your product. We'll do something called a matrix in one of our machines using the material we want to laser cut or engrave to demonstrate the relationship between power and speed when engraving or cutting. As you can see, the variations in power and speed produce very different results. Some of these squares are burned completely through. You don't have to use squares, you can test a matrix using any shape or letter or number you want to see just how it would engrave on whatever you're engraving in your current conditions. That's right. It's important to stay in the room while the laser does its things just in case something catches on fire so you can shut it down and extinguish it quickly. While it's not safe to look directly at a laser while it's cutting, the orange tinted safety lids both these machines feature will protect your eyes so you can safely watch it do its thing without protective goggles. Both the Xtool M1 and We Create Vision report they can cut wood up to a thickness of seven to eight millimeters or about a quarter of an inch. With diode lasers, I can tell you, cutting that maximum thickness would take a while and several passes. With these types of diode laser machines, we recommend working with three millimeter wood or about an eighth of an inch for best results. That's right. Both the Xtool and the We Create offer a rotary accessory for engraving round things like baseballs, small cylinder wood objects, stainless steel jewelry, and metal tumblers, for example. The rotary tool plugs directly into the machine and the software automatically controls the rotation speed to position the item exactly where the laser needs to be. A lot of people ask us, are laser engraving machines hard to use? Like with any crafting machine, there is a slight learning curve. Sure. But both We Create and Xtool have excellent software programs that are intuitive and fairly easy to use. If you've ever used any vinyl cutting software from Cricut Silhouette or any popular vinyl cutter, you'll see a lot of similarities. In the software, you will find vast libraries of sample projects you can use to experiment with or modify them and make them your own. There are more complex programs like Lightburn and Laser Gerbil, G-R-B-L. I think it's Gerbil, <laughs> used with some other brands of laser cutters and engravers. But wait for those until you're ready for the big time. These dimensional creations make incredible gifts or products you can sell online or at local craft fairs. Check out some of the stuff we made with our X Tool M1 and We Create Vision here on this channel. We've been so impressed with what these laser machines can do, we hardly use our Cricut machines anymore. We've even converted part of our garage into what this we're calling the laser room. <laughs> we're in the process of adding a CO2 laser as well. These are a lot more complicated, but don't worry, we'll cover all our CO2 research here on this channel so we can all learn together. If you decide to pick up your own X Tool M1 or We Create Vision, please use the affiliate links in the description of this video to help support our channel so we can continue to bring you great videos like this. Thanks for your support. Now let's go burn some stuff.